All right, hey guys, welcome back to another video. In today's video, we're gonna be doing Zentangle Hands, and it's gonna be for two grade levels, so let's get going. All right, how's it going guys? I'm Mr. Mill, and welcome back to another video. In today's video, we have to do Zentangle Hands, and I figured I'd show you guys two examples, and we're gonna be doing it with two grade levels. So the two grade levels I chose was second and third grade. Uh, we might have done this in the past with a grade beforehand, um, which obviously we have because, <laughs> what am I talking about? We have two examples here that I've done, and we did it with fourth grade and fifth grade, and I think I decided to bump it down a little bit. If we did do it in the past with third grade before, um, we're just gonna do it again. But anyways, um, I thought this project would be pretty fun to do. I uh, just gotta make sure you do it the correct way. There's rights and wrongs. And then it should be a nice, fun, relaxing project that you guys can do, like while watching TV, watching YouTube. And just like, kind of like let your mind go anywhere and then just kind of like let your mind go autopilot with doing a bunch of patterns and shapes and stuff. So anyways, let's get started and I'll show you guys what the requirements are and how to do it. So anyways, let's get started. So here I have two examples. Notice how they're different. They're different because one's just in black and white and another one is done in color. But there's another difference here, if you guys haven't noticed. The difference also is the patterns are on the inside of this hand and the patterns are on the outside of this hand. So you have a couple options here. Uh, you can use color if you want or you cannot use color or you can do the patterns on the outside or you can do the patterns on the inside. So you have a lot of options here and as you can see, um, you definitely have to do more than at least five uh, patterns. I'm asking for at least 10 or more. So anyways, um, I'm gonna show you guys the proper way how to trace your hand. There is a wrong way, and then we'll go from there. So the reason why I wanna teach you guys how to trace your hand, it might sound so simple, but there's actually a wrong way how to do it. So I'm gonna use my pencil right here, and I'm gonna do it on this side of my page right here. So if I put my hand down, and you take a pencil or another writing utensil, and you try to trace your hand by going really deep inside your fingers like this. So notice how my pencil is at an angle. I'm trying to dig really underneath my hand to try to get as close as possible. There's going to be something wrong with this technique when you're tracing your hand. Anyone know? Uh, I don't know why I'm asking you guys a question because we're not in school. That's normally, that's not, that's, uh, normally what I would say. But um, basically what would happen is that you wouldn't get a correct uh, outline of your hand. And what would happen, it would make it look like you're just bones. So let me remove my hand. Yeah, so that definitely does not look like a, a proper tracing. Now what you want to do is you want to place your hand like relatively the same way. So again, I'm placing my hand the same way how I did that one. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to do some Sharpie instead so I don't have to go back over it twice. Uh, I highly suggest you do it in pencil though. I'm only doing it in Sharpie just to skip a step. So what I'm going to do is trace my hand, but watch how I hold the writing utensil. I'm holding it up and down. Now, the reason why you hold it up and down is so you can get a really accurate and great uh, impression of your hand. And that way, you're not getting just the bones, like how what happened on the left-hand side of my paper. And I know I have a ring. I should have took off my ring because um, it's going to create a bump. But um, it'll have to do. So I'm going to finish it off, make sure I go to the end, and I'm going to remove my hand, and it should be a lot better than that one. And notice that there's a little bump by the ring, but that's all right. So I do have a bigger hand than usual, which is great, but it looks like it's divided evenly. Um, if you have a small hand and a little piece of paper, what I would do, if I were you, I would slide your hand a little bit up, that way you're in the middle of the page. So if you have a small hand, don't go like in the bottom corner, because then you're going to have like all this open space. Uh, don't go like all the way to the end. Cause you're gonna have a lot of arm that's gonna look like a tree. Uh, that might look cool, I don't know. <laughs> but um, try to make sure your hand's in the middle of the page, if not higher. That way you have more area to work with. So anyways, um, again, you can do it with either the outside or the inside. So after you trace your hand, there is another step. The next step is to divide your sections in half before you go autopilot in your head with patterns. So you have to decide, do you wanna do inside, like this one? Or do you want to do outside like this one? I don't want you guys to do both. It's going to look too chaotic and you won't be able to see the hand as well. So you want to choose either one or the other and go from there. So for me, I'm going to choose the uh, I'm going to choose the outside again. And we'll go from there. So should I choose outside? I already did the outside with black and white. So why don't I do black and white again, but with the inside instead? So what you're going to do is you're gonna count off the sections that you have. So if I divide my fingers like this, I have two sections per pattern. So one, two, that's definitely not enough. So why don't I divide it again? 
Why don't I go this way instead? There, now I got one, two, three. See? Pretty simple how to divide the sections up. You just kind of have to figure it out on your own. You can kind of create your own patterns if you'd like. Uh, for me, I'm just going to kind of like create random lines here and there, see what happens. So one, two, three, four, five, six. Um, so obviously, I'm starting to realize that maybe 10 might be too much, but we'll see. All right, why don't I go this direction and this direction. All right, I think I have 10 sections. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I got nine. Uh, I don't, I still want 10 though. What else can I do? I guess I can do my thumb part, but that's gonna look weird. I guess I can do my pinky part. Here we go. All right, there we go. I'm gonna require you guys to do at least six sections. How's that? Because right now, 10 looks kind of crazy. Anyways, um, the best thing I could do for you guys is the slides over a little bit. And then I'll post um, maybe a screenshot of some simple Zentangle patterns that you can copy. And then that way you can like pause the video and like take a look at it. Uh, or maybe I'll just put it over here <laughs> on both sides so you can see. But anyways, um, I might have to fast forward this video. We'll see. Because right now, I'm going to look at these two Zentangle pattern examples. And then I'll see what I can come up with. Or maybe I have to copy a couple of them. So let's get going. almost done here and then I should be finished with the project so anyways um, it was a very very quick project if you guys just put your mind to it and again like you said you can kind of like zone out and just do something else while you're watching uh, and then doing this project and I thought it turned out pretty well I now that I'm comparing it side by side with the other um, black and white photo I'm really really liking it and if you look at the color one I'm really excited to see if someone does the color version but with the negative space instead on the outside. So anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and I can't wait to see you guys next one. Bye-bye.